boys today. Basically, there's some wiring that I need to clean up. This is the wiring for the fans. This one was working fine, and this one was not turning on, so I need to do some troubleshooting and see if that one's broken or my wiring is crap. Other than that, all the fittings and stuff came in to wire in the aftermarket gauges, so I may see about that. I also am going to put the timing cover back on that we figured out the oil and water leaks in there. Can't really see it, but yeah, we'll put the timing cover back on. Let's see. Oh, and we have an issue where the headlights are not coming on, and I'm still having an issue where the tack is not staying on. So, figure out some electrical stuff. I bet for these headlights, I'm missing a ground somewhere. So, once I take all this stuff out to get to the timing cover, I should be able to track down that ground or at least see where the wires are going. So, yep, that's what I'm working on today. All right, so we're making some progress. Got the timing cover and pulleys back on. Looks good. I don't have to worry about a rock flying up in there and blowing up the engine anymore. I also plugged this plug into the other radiator fan and it turns on, which means there's something up the wiring for that fan. So I'll figure that out. And I also discovered that there was a ground that wasn't plugged in beneath this headlight. Plugged it in and now both headlights turn on, which there's no battery in it at the moment, but they turn on. And so we are knocking things off the list left and right. Should have this thing done in no time. All right, all right. Got the truck pulled in the garage. She's driving really well. I really want to make this tack work, but after doing some research, I found out that you have to have a certain kind of aftermarket tack to work with uh, DIS, which is anything that has coil packs. Can't really see it, but this has a coil pack. Um, ignition system as opposed to having a distributor. So I ordered the right kind of tack. This one sadly will not work. But no big deal, because in the meantime, I'm gonna work on installing these Harbor Freight gauges. So that I can monitor, you know, voltage, oil pressure, water temp. And then I can take this down, because all that this is doing for me is letting me monitor water temp right now. And then once that's down, I can start looking at mounting the actual dash. And putting switches and gauges in a more permanent location. So that's what I'm working on today. All right, so for the water temp gauge, there's a fitting on the line already. Uh, you can't change on these cheap Harbor Freight gauges. So luckily it came with this adapter in case you have like a really old car that has a huge spot for water temp. And I'm using this thing, which goes on your upper radiator hose because I don't really have good access to the back of the engine to put it where you should put it. So the upper radiator hose will work fine. The only problem is it came with this tiny hole for the sensor and this is like twice that big. But luckily that threads into this adapter. So I'm just gonna drill this out real big, put that in there with some JB weld and then that'll fit into this. Hopefully no problem. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So that was a bit more challenging than I thought, but got it done. It's in there tight. I tested it. It's um, water tight. So that screws in fine. The sensor's in a good spot. I feel good about that. To actually get that hole big enough, I had to use a Christmas tree bit and then I had to chop the end off of it because I didn't want to drill through the other side. And this is just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. So that worked great. It always feels good to make your own tool when it worked the way that it was supposed to. So that's cool. Now just throw it on the car and then the oil I got an adapter for so it should just thread right in. I'm going to use Teflon tape on everything and that should work. Alright so that was a pain in the tush but I got the thing in for the coolant sensor. And so now I'm going to drain the oil so that I can put the, uh, the oil sensor where the stock one goes which is right here. And plus it's good to change your oil out after a new rebuild and driving it around a bit. I'm sure there were some flakes in there from where I deleted the balance shafts. So yeah, change oil and then wire those gauges up and should be all set. Let's see. It actually doesn't look too bad. I still feel good about changing it though. 
All right, so that sensor's torqued down, all that good stuff. I've got the lines run. I need to zip tie this oil one out of the way. I have to use kind of a series of fittings to get that to go in, but it's in, it's pretty snug. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Um, put the new oil filter on, got everything tightened up, put oil in it. So far there's nothing leaking. I haven't started it yet. Like I say, this, uh, this line is like hitting the belts and stuff, so I definitely need to zip tie that out of the way before I start it. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And inside, I've got both those gauges where I can see them. And I'm still gonna run this one because I know that that works in the meantime, you know, in case there's something wrong with this. And yeah, I've started up. Put some more coolant in it because I lost some when I put that little adapter in there. And we'll take four dry and see how she does. Okay, so when some lose some, uh, the water gauge does work and I was testing it against this one while the car was on and it's accurate. That'll work, um, which is good because that's the only reason that I was running this entire cluster because that's all I was working on it. So on the other hand, this oil pressure gauge is not working. I'm really not sure what the problem is. I need to do some troubleshooting on it. But for now, I'm probably just gonna run it. I suspect it may have something to do with this line being kinked as to why I'm not getting any oil pressure reading, but really not too worried about it. This thing's gonna leak a bit. I'm just gonna keep checking oil on it. Not to worry about it at all. Something I figured out about the water pressure gauge is that it doesn't actually say this in the paperwork you get from Harbor Freight. I was looking at some, some documentation on some other ones online. And it relies, even though it's a mechanical gauge, it relies on a ground from where you thread the gauge in. And since I did it this way, there is no ground there. So I actually wrapped a wire around it and grounded it to the truck. And sure enough, that water gauge started working. So I need to clean these wires up and then I can start putting the dash in. So yeah, baby steps, but you know, we're making progress.